my guess is that you feel like SEO is probably a little too complicated, a little bit too long term for you to really focus on it. And, and I totally understand that. But here's the thing. It's important to at least understand a few basics of SEO so that as you create your articles, as you create content, as you put things out there, as you build your web page, you don't make the stupid mistake that kills your ability to get rankings. Lots and lots of people get a significant chunk of traffic from SEO every single day of the year simply because they don't make the stupid mistakes. So what I'd like to do today is to share with you six stupid uh, SEO mistakes that many people make that kill your rankings. If you make these mistakes, you'll kill yours. Let's know what those mistakes are so we don't make them so that you can have a big chunk of that traffic. And then later on, if you want to go focus on SEO, that'll be wonderful too. Okay, so here we go. So most people don't know much about SEO. It's called search engine optimization. That's trying to move your website up in the rankings in Google and in all the other different search engines so that you get more tra more traffic from natural searches. And what ends up happening is they make mistakes that kill the rankings. So let me just show you literally my last two days. OK, so this is what's what what I've encountered in the last two days of working with with clients uh, in the SEO space. So new people coming to me or in one case, an existing client. OK, so here's an example of, of something that's done. So what this top chart is, is this orange line here shows the traffic that they're getting from SEO. As you can see, they peaked right out here and then they started dying. And then you look at this is like, OK, so this this is basically if you look at this top line, this is saying how many keywords they're ranking for. Something happened right here. Boom. So right here, they their traffic died, their number of keywords died. What was that? Well, I'll show you in one of the mistakes in a little bit. They should not have made that mistake. And literally that mistake was like a five minute error and it killed their traffic. OK, here's another one. So this particular client brought us on to, to create content for them. And so what we did is we started creating content for them right here. Can you see? Can you? See? Well, this is when they started publishing this content right here. Can you see what happened? Man, our keywords went up and everything. Like that. But what happened to traffic? Why didn't traffic go up? In fact, it went down and then it came up a little bit and then it went back down again. And it's like, what in the world happened? Well, that's another mistake. I'll just tell you right now. They changed their homepage to look prettier and removed most of the most of the keywords and the and the content about what it is that they do from that because they wanted it to look pretty. And what ended up happening is it just killed their search engine traffic for their main page. So meanwhile, we're off here creating content pages that are doing great for them, but their homepage, their key page is just dying. OK, so let's talk about six stupid on page SEO mistakes that will kill your rankings. Now, just I put the word on page on there. That means basically the stuff you control, the words you write, how you structure your site, those kinds of things. That's what on page SEO means. All right. So mistake number one is that one I just showed you the graph redesigning your top ranking page or pages to improve appearances while ignoring SEO. So this happens all the time. Hey, this page is doing great. Let's make it look prettier. So let's give it to a designer who doesn't understand SEO because I know almost no designers that really understand SEO. I've got a few that I work with, but the average designer goes to art school, goes to design classes. They don't learn anything about SEO. And if they do, they learn faulty information that's 20 years old. And so as a result, what ends up happening is your traffic tanks, but your page sure looks good. Most frequent instance is your home pages. So here's what we, we can look at this from an S, from an SEO standpoint, from a redesign standpoint. So as you redesign a page, you cannot eliminate copy about your the terms where your rankings are currently doing really well. 
So that's what happened in this one. It turns out that this page used to have 46 mentions of one key term that was the one thing that the key term that was the money term for them. Had 46 of them on the page, way too many, but they had 46. They took it down to five and that caused their rankings to go from number seven, number five, to number seven. So they were still ranked on the first page. But that difference between five and seven was what killed those rankings, that, that traffic. And so the traffic went down just by making that one little gap from number five to number seven, just by removing a whole bunch of instances of that word. Now, I'm not going to say you should ever have 46 instances of any word on your, any page. But you can't just come in and say, oh, this page is too long. Let's just rip a bunch of stuff out, which is essentially what happened to make it look prettier. Secondly, you cannot Im eliminate the headers, the H1, the H2. So the subheads, you know, remember when you used to write pa papers back in college and they said, OK, put a header here that says what these next three paragraphs are about and then put another subhead here that says what these next three. That works in the web, too. We usually put them as what we call H1s, H2s, H3s, and each one is like another level of subdirectory down, subheader down. And if you've got them, and they contain the key core work, core words that you want your site to rank on. You can't make those go away. And you certainly can't just make them become prettier because you don't like what the new font does. OK, next, you cannot replace words with pictures of words. Designers do this all the time. Well, we want this pretty font. And so we're just going to take a picture of the words and we'll put the picture there. Well, what ends up happening is oftentimes you're doing that with the very keywords that you want that page to rank for and it dies in its rankings. And you can't go put things like TMs in the middle of a keyword phrase that you want to rank for because to Google, hey, Bob Jones's pharmacy and you put a TM after Jones, what ends up doing, it no longer ranks for Bob Jones's pharmacy. It ranks for Do Bob Jones's TM pharmacy, which is a totally different concept. And it doesn't make sense to the search engines and you'll lose rankings as a result of that. OK, I realize I'm talking some technical things here and just wait until you see number six. I'm, number six, I'm going to show you about how to deal with this. All right. Mistake number two trying to game the SEO system. There's a reason that the search engines do not reveal their ranking algorithms. When they do, then everybody goes and does that one thing over and over and over again. And then it just totally destroys the algorithms and they can't figure out what to rank where. And so what ends up happening is they don't tell us what their algorithms do. So we guess. And most of the time we guess wrong. So let me just give you a couple of wrong things that people do all the time that they are trying to game the system. Most of these things are things that literally stopped working. They worked once for like four months in 2001. It's a whole lot later than that right now. They don't work anymore. In fact, they penalize you. So one of them is percentage of words on the page. So there are a number of keyword tools out there right now that say, and some AI development tools that say, hey, put this keyword at least six times on your page and put this one should be at least 2.1% of the words on your page. If you do that, you end up with 46 instances of a keyword on your page exactly the wrong thing to do. Next thing is what we call keyword loading. Oh, hey, I want this thing to rank rank for saltwater aquariums. And so I'm going to write my copy like this. Saltwater aquariums are a very important part of many people's decorations in their homes. Thus, many people who put a saltwater aquarium in their home do it because they really love the color of the color of the fish. And so therefore, we recommend that everyone should have at least four saltwater aquariums in their home. You can put a saltwater aquarium in your entryway. Another saltwater. Can you see what, what's happening here? Someone has decided they want to rank for saltwater aquarium. So they just load it into every single sentence in their in their page. And as soon as you do that, the, the search engines say, this is unnatural. It triggers a penalty in their, in their algorithm. And I, I just said something that technically is not true from an SE. Basically, what they do is they hurt you because you did that.
Okay. Third thing, trying to hide keywords. So some people will go and say, hey, my background's white. I'm going to take saltwater aquarium and put it 16 times down here and I'll make the background of that white. And so the search engines can't, can't tell that it's there. And it's like, no, 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 no. They figured that out literally in 1998. Okay. Don't try to game the system. Better write great content and make it easy to consume with like short paragraphs and subheaders and, and occasional pictures to break up the copy. You know, anytime you see this massive copy that looks like a textbook, people stop reading. And so when they stop reading, that gives the, that tells the search engine, so this person is having a bad experience with this page. And so they downrank that page. Just write great content and make it look good. Give people a good ex user experience and they'll come and the search engines will start ranking you high. All right. Mistake number three. I'm going to get a little technical here for just a minute. And you don't have to understand what I'm saying. Okay. I'm going to show you number six, how to deal with this. Make, making technical changes without validating them. So almost everything that has a technical change that you can make that will affect you, how your website uh, uh, behaves also will have some kind of a validator someplace that you can put that in just to make sure that it doesn't foul things up. So I'll give you a great example of this. Remember when I showed you that first graph of the of the one where their, their traffic just fell off a cliff? That happened because they changed what's called the robots.txt file, which basically is a tool where you can tell uh, Google or, well, any search engines, hey, don't index these pages. Don't even go look in this directory, those kinds of things. And basically you, what you're doing is you're barring it from, from indexing certain pages. They made a, pay, a, a change that basically barred Google from they could see that that page was there, but they couldn't look at it. And of course, their traffic dies off because if Google can't see the page, they can't rank it. So robots.txt is a really important file that you got to do right and you got to validate it afterwards. And again, this is technical. I'll show you in a minute how to deal with that. Next is what's called the htaccess.htaccess file. Similar kind of thing. It's It's got some other things that it does, but you got to validate it. Next. We, okay, if your site is not secure, you have to make it secure. Go make it, go, don't do anything. Don't pass go, don't go eat dinner before you go figure out how to make your site secure. It's, it's an important ranking factor today. But as you do that, one of the things you gotta do is you gotta redirect. If someone comes in putting HTTP colon slash Don Crowther.com, you need to have, and the, the correct site is now HTTPS. Don, doncrowler.com, then what ha ends up happening is Google considers those to be two sites. And so what you need to do is you need to take anybody that comes in as doncrowler.com, not HTTPS, and redirect them from here to here. So you got to do that redirect. Same thing when you eliminate your www. So yeah, we used to always do www. I don't know why we did something that had 13 syllables by the time you say it, but we used to put them in. Now we sort of don't. And I strongly recommend that people don't. When you give, when you give your URL to somebody, don't say www. Just say your name of your site, okay? And you have to have a redirect when you do that because if you do it and you don't do that redirect, then the search engines get lost. And I'll talk more about redirects in just a moment. Final one, this will become much more important with what we call Google Analytics 4, which is the new breed of analytics that's come out from Google. It's basically a site that tells you how much traffic you got, where, where it's coming from, those kinds of things. As you do that, there's a thing called events and you can do events and, and they're incredibly powerful. You can do things like, hey, I want to know if someone scrolled three quarters of the way down the page. I want to know anytime someone clicks this link and put them in a certain group. So that way I can look at people and I can say, hey, the people who click these links are the people that I want because maybe that link goes to your buy page. All right. I want to know who those people are. I want to know their commonalities of them versus the people who don't. OK, that's great. The challenge of events is if you make a mistake, you can foul everything up. And so there's validators that make sure that you didn't destroy anything. You're going to have to learn about how to do this and you're going to have to have somebody probably to help you in this process. All right. Okay. So here's the solution. Get a pro to help you with your technical stuff. And I strongly suggest you don't go to Fiverr to get that person. Okay. We'll talk more about this in number six. Okay. Mistake number four. Okay. We're done with the technical part. Whew. 
Okay, you survived. You're still here. All right, excellent. Number four, changing URLs without doing a redirect. Remember, I told you about redirect. So basically, a redirect is, hey, this page that used to live on this URL now lives on that URL. And it says, if you come, is search engine, if you come to this page, to this URL, instead, remove that from your directory and go over here instead. That's what we call a 301 direct redirect. It's It used to be here. It's over here go there and remove the old one from it and change it to the new one. Okay. It's a redirect. It's just basically a sign that says you're in the wrong place. You should be over there. All right. Now, anytime you page change a page's URL in any way, whether it's changing the actual name of the URL, making an HTTPS instead of an HTTP, making a blank with just the URL instead of www. Any of those things, it's considered to be a new page in Google. So Google says that old page is still there and this new page is over here. Even if the old page goes away, they don't know that they're the same page. They don't have duplicate checkers that way. And if you don't set up a redirect, then the search engines think that this page died because you moved it over there and a new page just happened to happen that same day and they don't connect that. They don't do that connection. So what ends up happening is you you, you lose all your rankings, you, you, lo you lose your links, you lose your traffic that used to cut, go to that page and it can really hurt you. And so let me show you some common culprits, things that cause this. Number one, the biggest one is that most people don't realize that you have a t the title that you have for your page in, in WordPress. If you come back to that three months later and you say, oh, I made a typo in this. It's has it shouldn't have an apostrophe in there and you change it. What you just actually let's not do it's let's say, oh, I left the word this in when, when this should not have been in there. And so you take it out. You just created a new URL for that page in WordPress. Anytime you change the title of a page, excuse me, the title of a post or the title of a page in WordPress, you just changed its URL. And if you don't go do a redirect, then you just lost the search engines because that page no longer lives where it used to and now lives over here. And so all the links, all the traffic, all the search engine rankings you've got on the old page are no longer applicable, even though all you did was change the title by one word or one, one letter. So you got to do a redirect anytime you do that. And by the way, many of the programs like uh, Yoast or Rank Math do that automatically for you. If you change it, they just create a redirect for you. That's one reason why I strongly believe everyone who's doing anything in terms of content using WordPress should have either Rank Math, my preferred, or Yoast, my second preferred, okay? Be and then turn, click the little box that says, if I change a page's title, do a redirect for me automatically so you don't make this mistake. All right, secondly, some people will come in, they can say, oh, it, it, this especially happens when, when a boss who doesn't understand the internet so it comes in and, so, and starts looking at a web page and go, why do all these things have this word in the URL? I think we should just take that out. Or why do they have this word? I think it should be that word. And then it will enable us to organize things better. Well, first off, the search engines don't care how it's organized. Actually, they do, but they don't care the same way you care. OK, so if you just take and move things into different folders from where they used to be, you just change this URL. You got to do a redirect. Next, changing from date base to flat. So I don't understand why WordPress for years has had their default thing be it has a date in the URL. Why in the world would anyone ever want to have that? I don't know. It was a stupid idea when they did it, and it continues to be a stupid idea today. If you have dates in your URL, you should remove them, but you must do a redirect to tell Google, hey, it shouldn't, it's no longer here on this date path. It's up here in the in the in the title path. And then the final thing is when people redesign a site, oftentimes they say this page is dated. It's it, I don't want I want to remove it. This page, I'm going to combine this page with that page. And they start doing those things. And what they end up doing is they create changes in URLs that didn't used to be there. So redirects are not hard but they absolutely are necessary if you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot, okay? Now, 
I do have one caveat. Almost any time you do do a redirect, you will lose traffic for a time. It's just a fact of the search engine life. You will lose traffic for a time. So just be aware of that. Make the change because sometimes it's better to do the change, but you're probably a month or two going to see a reduction in, in traffic. Live through that. And then on the other end, you'll come out better because now it's better. All right. Mistake number five not internally linking your pages. What this does, is so many people will write a piece of content and then they're so excited to publish this and maybe send it out to their email list and everything else like that, that they never think to link to that page from another page that's already been published. What that means is that you create what we call orphan pages, which is a, basically a page that's sitting out there and nothing anywhere links to that page. What that does is it means the search engines, they, they do have one way called the sitemap to know that it's there. But in many cases, they just never pick up that page, never actually put it in their directory. It can be the best page in the world on this particular subject. But, the, but if Google doesn't see any links coming to it, it's like, it's not all that important. And one thing you can do is you can control your own links to that page. Now, one thing you need to understand, pe people, when I tell people this all the time, they say, oh, well, it automatically goes into my navigational links. There is a link there. Well, Google actually has figured out years ago Here's a page and down this side, we have navigational links. They ignore those links for ranking purposes. What they're doing is they're looking for in context links. So here's some text. And then all of a sudden, right in the middle of the text, there's a blue underlined section or whatever, a linked section that goes off to someplace else. They consider that link to be way more valuable than the one going down the side of your page. Okay. Those are called in context links. That's what you need to create anytime you create a new page. And you should go through your site and look at everything and make sure that every page has at least one or two or three pages linking into it. Let me give you an example of a in context link. So when you name your aardvark, it's very important that you don't give them an anteater name. Now notice anteater name is underlined. And so that's a link. So there's another page somewhere I've got that discusses anteater names. All right. Aardvarks are very touchy about this. If you give them an anteater name, they will likely be very offended and they'll rip up your curtains and cur curtains and carpet. So not, not only is what I just said there very important, but the more important thing is notice the con in context link. That's what you want to do throughout your site. By the way, there are tools that enable you to do this. Rank Math does it. Yoast does it. There are other tools that are only designed just to build these internal links and make them easy for you. I strongly, strongly suggest you make that just part of the process, your standard operating procedures. Every time you publish a new piece of content is that you as you publish it, you go and look for three other pages, let's say that you could logically link into that because the, the, it's just part of the context. You know, you're already talking about anteater names on this page. And so make a link from that. And another, here's this other page that talks about aardvark names. And so, you know, put in a warning about anteater names. So do that in like three different pages so that every, no, no page is ever an orphan. So why would you do this? Well, internal links tell the search engines that this page is important and related to the concepts that are on that other page. Since they're already ranking that page, now they can say, oh, this page is now related to that and it's important enough they link to it. And the second thing is that helps your readers understand the concepts you're giving by giving them the ability to drill down to get more information on a specific subject. Okay. All right. Mistake number six not having an SEO expert on call to answer questions and prevent disasters. So here's that example again. Here's where they set, here's where they changed a robots.txt file. Bam, it just died. If they would have had somebody on call to be able to just, hey, can you double check our robots.txt file? It, they could have prevented like all this loss of, tra of traffic and all this loss of keywords. And now we got to go back and rebuild that whole thing because they just didn't spend five minutes or half an hour and ask somebody who knew what was going on. So recommendation number one, get 
an SEO checkup at least annually to help go back and say, okay, if you did this differently, if you did this differently, if you did this differently, that's what I've been working on the last two days is, is doing some of those SEO checkups. I strongly suggest you have one of those done on a regular basis. Recommendation number two, I recommend everybody has an SEO expert on call that you can ask questions of as they arrive. It's just too important in your life and your business to risk this. And there are too many things that unfortunately can bite you without you even really knowing. It's sort of like driving a car, you know, it, it, unless someone trained you, you got to change the oil. You got to have somebody look at the transmission fluid regularly. You probably ought to go in and just get a checkup at least once a year to make sure that you're not doing anything stupid in your car and to fix anything that needs to be fixed to improve its performance and improve its life. That's what a good SEO person can do for you. So I'm not necessarily saying everybody should go off and do a bunch of SEO work, though, frankly, I think everyone should. But if you're not, if that's not in your wheelhouse right now, at least get a checkup once a year and get have somebody that you can call and ask questions. So if you're interested in that, we're considering providing that as a service. Would you just give me your thoughts in the comments as to if you're interested, what kinds of things you'll be looking for, that kind of thing that will help us as we design this program for you and other clients that are out there. OK, let me know in the comments and don't make these mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> your life's too important. Your business is too important. And there's so many things that can bite you. Just don't make the mistakes. Thanks. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. This is Don Crowther saying, just go do this stuff. Mm -hmm.